This is Twit. Smoke and solder. Well, you know, I like to, I like to solder, of course, obviously by the title. Uh, I like to play with radios too. I like to uh, play with computers and program, play with electronics hardware. And every now and then you get an opportunity to put all of those things together. And, uh, boy, I, I really have a good time then. Not this past Huntsville Ham Fest, but the one before, there was a vendor there called Nightfire Electronics. Their website is vakits.com. They had a little DTMF decoder circuit. Just a, a little tiny module that you could, uh, well, you stand alone or, you know, hook some logic chips to it or tie it to a computer or a microcontroller. And, you know, the, that's the kind of thing I like to do. And I finally got around to pulling it out and playing with it a little bit here, actually just last night. And here is, is what I've got. I uh, decided to use an Arduino Uno with it. There's a little module right there. I've got a few LEDs connected here. And uh, I've got my ICOM ID51 right here plugged in uh, from the speaker out of it going into the DTMF decoder. So if I hear any DTMF tones there coming over the air, theoretically that decoder should decode them right there. And I've written a program that's uh, running in the Arduino there. Actually, they call it a sketch, but it's a program. Uh, that's going to decode it and uh, do basically whatever I want it to do. Well, in this case, I've just got three LEDs here that I'm going to light up, depending on uh, which tone is coming in. And I'll uh, have a combination of LEDs just so I can get more indications with only three LEDs. But, you know, this kind of project right here would be fantastic for um, if you were going to build a repeater controller or something like that, or wanted a way to turn on and off something over the air, you could use, uh, you know, your radio and your DTMF keypad and control uh, pretty much anything you wanted to. So let's take a little look here. I, I made up a little video, and then we'll come back and we'll try this thing out. Here's how it's all connected. We've got an Arduino Uno. Of course, this could have been almost any microcontroller. You could have used an Arduino Mega and got a lot more I.O. on the unit. I've got three LEDs. I'm using 300 ohm resistors there to drop the current a little bit. On the MT880 module, we've got Q1 through 4 as well as STQ connected to digital I.O. pins three, four, five, six, and seven on the Arduino. There's also pins to connect plus five and ground to the module. And at the top, there's a mini plug where you can run audio into the unit. Let's take a look at the source code. First, we've got a few declarations here at the top to declare some variables. We're gonna have a byte named DTMF data, and that's where we're gonna store the data that we're reading out of the DTMF module. Then we've got five integers here, which represent the five digital I.O. pins on the Arduino that are connected to the DTMF module. STQ is connected to digital pin 3, Q4 to 4, Q3 is to 5, Q2 to 6, and Q1 is connected to the digital I.O. pin number 7 on the Arduino. Then we've got three integers to store, which pins are used for the three LEDs that I've connected. LED pin 1 is going to be on pin number 8. LED 2, number 9. LED 3 on digital pin number 10 on the Arduino. Next, there is a setup section of the program here. This runs any time the Arduino is booted up. It's only used here to set the modes of the digital pins on the Arduino, whether they should be input or output. We've set all the pins that are connected to the DTMF modules to be inputs because we're wanting to read data from the DTMF module. And then we set the three pins here that are connected to our LEDs to be outputs because we want to output a signal to the LED to illuminate them. 
Then the next section of the program here is the loop. And this is where the program spends all its time. After it's boot up, executed the setup section, then it just runs in loop over and over again. The first thing we do is initialize that byte that we had set up to store the DTMF data. We just set it to be zero. Then we've got an if statement here. We're doing a digital read of the STQ pin, which just happened to be pin 3 back up here. Anytime that we've got a DTMF signal present at the input to the decoder, this STQ is going to be high. So we look here, we do a digital read. If STQ is equal to high, then we're going to check the four Q pins, Q1, 2, 3, and 4. These are where the four bits of our digital data are stored. If Q1 is high, then we're going to take DTMF data, which so far was set to zero, and we're going to add a 1 to it. If digital read of Q2, which was pin 6 up here, if it happens to be high, we'll add a 2 to whatever DTMF data is. If Q3 is high, we'll add a 4. And if Q4 is high, we'll add an 8. This is more or less like decoding a binary number. First place is a 1, the next one would be a 2, and then a 4, and then an 8. Let's take a look below that. Next, we're going to decode the 4 bits that we just came up with right here. And that's going to tell us what button was pressed on the DTMF keypad. If it's 0, then that tells us that the D was pressed on the keypad. If the case equals 1, then that tells us button number 1 was pressed. And we're going to do a digital write. LED pin 1 is output number 8. We're going to write to it a high, which will turn on that LED. If the number decoded to be 2, well, we know button 2 was pressed, so we're going to light LED pin 2 the same way. We just do a digital write to the pin number for LED 2, set it to high. If 3 was pressed, we'll light LED pin 3. If 4 was pressed, well, we're going to light two different LEDs here just so we can see a little something different happened. LED pin 1 and 2 will set to high. If a 5 was pressed, we're going to light LEDs 1 and 3. If 6 was pressed, we'll light 2 and 3. If 7 was pressed, we're going to light all three LEDs, 1, 2, and 3. And then you can see the other cases are below here for numbers 8 on up through 0, and then the star, pound, A, B, and C. Now, we just didn't put any code in there because I was out of LEDs, but, you know, these could be relays, or they could be whatever you wanted them to be. They really wouldn't have to be any kind of physical hardware. We could have a statement right here that said, send a serial data stream out of the unit to control a rig or something, just whatever you wanted to put in there. So we've got 16 different commands for the 16 different possible buttons on a DTMF keypad. And then below here, We've got uh, some commands here just to turn off the three LEDs so they're ready for next time. So what happens? We go back to the top of the loop and it starts all over. We just keep repeating this loop over and over. At this link, you can find a download of the drawings and the code for this project. Now let's see if it works. Okay, and that, that was very simple to do there. Not much to it at all. Uh, you know, and you don't really need a microcontroller to be able to control LEDs, but you can certainly do a lot with it. You know, that's, um, like I say, that would be the great beginnings of a repeater controller. You could do a lot more with it than just turn on and off things. So I do plan to do something with it, sort of serious. I just don't know what it is yet, but when I come up with it, I'll be ready to go because the thing worked just, just right out of the chute there and didn't seem to be much problem at all. And I built one, uh, a DTMF decoder back uh, in 91, 
to uh, remote control a dual band rig that I had to turn on and off cross band, repeat, change frequencies and such. It was a lot more difficult and took a lot more time than this did. So um, definitely, uh, you know, there's some possibilities there, and I'm going to research it further. Well, I promised we were going to see if it worked. Um, yeah, here we go right here. That's the unit. Got it hooked up over here, handy talkie. I'm going to take another handy talkie, and I'm going to send some codes into it. Let's send a one. All right, lit up the red, a two. Three, a four, lit up two of them, a five, lit up two others, a six, another pair, and then a seven lights up all of them. The rest of the buttons on the handy talkie, I don't have them programmed to do anything, but you can see, uh, you know, it wasn't very much code there, very simple to do, and uh, very inexpensive and quick too. So, uh, boy, possibilities are endless there. And you're not limited to just, you know, the 16 DTMF tones that uh, you've got on your handy talkie. You, with uh, some slight uh, timing code in there, you could take in multiple digits and then act upon that, you know, just, uh, well, an infinite number of digits, however many we want to put in there. So uh, a lot of possibilities. I hope you enjoyed that because, uh, boy, I, I sure had fun playing with it.